Hi everyone, welcome back to English with Emma. Today you're going to learn how to describe a photograph. You'll learn how to talk about the people in the photograph. What are they doing? What are they wearing? How are they feeling? You'll also learn how to describe the things in the picture and talk about the situation in general. Let's get started. Describing a photo is something that you will have to do if you do the PET speaking exam in part three, or if you do the Aptis speaking exam in part two. In PET speaking part three, you have to talk about a photo for one minute. In Aptis speaking part two, you have to answer three questions and you have to talk for 45 seconds for each question. Question one, you have to describe the picture. Two, relate what you see in the picture to your own experience. And in question three, you have to give an opinion about the picture. In this video, we'll focus on questions one and two. So you'll learn how to describe the picture and relate what you see to your own experience. These are skills which you will also need to use for pet speaking part three. So when you describe a photo, what should you describe? What should you talk about? You should talk about everything you can see in the picture. So what can you see? What color are the objects? Where are they located in the picture? Describe the people. What are they wearing? What do they look like? What's their relationship? What are they doing? Where are they? And why are they there? Let's look at this photo to start with. So how do we talk about the people in the picture? Well, to talk about states, we use the present simple tense. They are young adults. He has dark hair. She has long, dark, wavy hair. The flowers are pink and yellow. The food looks tasty. The walls are pink. They are in a restaurant. We also use the present simple to talk about feelings. They look happy. They seem happy. I think they are excited to be on a date. How do you think this man is feeling? He looks very tired. He seems very tired. I think he is sleepy. Now, what about actions? We use the present continuous. They are smiling. He is wearing a suit. He is wearing a blue shirt. She is wearing a blue top. They are having lunch. He is drinking wine. He is wearing glasses. Now, if you'd like more information about the present simple tense or the present continuous tense, then check out the links in the description below. Now, let's talk about what you can see in the picture. We use there is and there are. So what's the difference between there is and there are? Well, there is is singular. And if we take there plus is, we can contract it to theirs. There's a mirror. There's a big window. There are is plural. There plus are. We contract and we get there are. There are two clocks. 
there are two chairs. How can we talk about where things are? On the left, on the right, at the top, at the bottom, in the corner, in the background, in the foreground, in the middle. There's a pub in the background. There's a musician in the foreground. In the bottom right corner, there's a box of money. There's a green and white awning at the top. There are some people on the right. There's a table in the middle of the picture. Now, we can also talk about where things are using prepositions of place. On, in, next to, in front of, under, above, between. There's some bread on the table. There are some lemons in a bowl. There are some cupboards above the sink. There's an oven under the microwave. There are some herbs next to the bread. There's a saucepan lid in front of the chopping board. There's some salt and pepper between the bread and the lemons. Look at this picture. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. There's a lamp in the corner. There's a picture between the windows. There's a plant in front of the window on the left. There's a red armchair in front of the coffee table. Now, we can also speculate about what might be happening, or what the situation might be. And we use modal verbs to do this. If we're very sure that something is true, then we use must plus the infinitive of the verb. They must be a couple. They must be on a date. They must be in a restaurant. They must know each other very well. If we think something is possible, 50-50, then we use could, may, or might, plus the infinitive of the verb. It could be an expensive restaurant. They may be celebrating their anniversary. It might be their first date. If we are very sure that something is not true, then we use can't plus the infinitive of the verb. They can't be arguing. They can't be having breakfast. It can't be a fast food restaurant. They can't be working. So let's see some more examples. It must be winter. She might be walking to work. It could be London. She can't be warm. We can also speculate using adverbs. Maybe, about 50%, perhaps, also about 50%, and probably, which is more like 80 to 90%. Look at this picture again. Maybe he's in London. Perhaps he's going home from work. Maybe he will arrive soon. Perhaps he's British. He is probably very tired. He's probably going to fall asleep. He has probably been working hard. It's probably evening. Now, 
How do we relate the situation to your own life, your own experiences? We can say, this reminds me of, plus a noun or a gerund. So what's a gerund? Well, a gerund is a verb plus ing, a verb that acts as a noun. Let's see some examples. This reminds me of my birthday. This reminds me of celebrating my birthday. This reminds me of my friends. This reminds me of going out with my friends. And we can give more information about the situation using the present tense. If the situation is true for you now or the past tense, if the picture reminds you of a past situation. Look at this picture. What does it remind you of? Let's look at an example using a noun. This reminds me of my maths classroom. We also have a big whiteboard and we sit around a big table together. This reminds me of my maths classroom. We had a big whiteboard and we sat around a big table together. Now let's see with the gerund. This reminds me of studying maths. It's my favourite school subject. This reminds me of studying maths. It was my favourite school subject. Thanks for watching guys. If you found the video useful, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, then hit the subscribe button. That's all for now. Have a great day. Bye.